Welcome dear viewers, it has been a while. I am Rivus Space and today I have a great subject for you, a company that will revolutionize how we think about space stations. The near future of human presence in space will definitely be exciting and one of the things which excite me the most are the incoming commercial space stations. The reason why is pretty simple. If some companies are able to prove that there is a substantial profit to be made in Earth's orbit, more will start doing so, bringing us closer to the interplanetary future. For now, we are waiting for the Sierra Station from the Sierra Nevada Corporation, which will crush the past space stations with humongous volume available, and the Axiom Station from Axiom Space, which seems almost destined to succeed thanks to its proven design and team made up of people who have worked on the ISS project for years. But there is one more competitor, one which might steal a significant portion of the market from those two. They are called Nanorax and plan to create much more than one station with their Outpost project. And I'm going to discuss who they are, what they plan to do and why their plan is freaking awesome right now. So, the first thing to know about Nanorax is that they are not a random startup over-promising to obtain funding. They were founded by Jeffrey Manber and Charles Miller back in 2009 and have completed a number of projects since. Their original mission was to provide commercial hardware and services to the United States National Laboratory on the International Space Station through their agreement with NASA and they have been expanding their in-space capabilities for the past 12 years. Their most interesting research projects include nanolabs, which are self-contained boxes with scientific hardware, which you can use to fly your own experiments to the ISS without spending money on designing your own hardware. They allow organizations to focus on what they want to research, rather than how, making space much more reachable for smaller institutions. For more dangerous substances, which should be kept away from the astronauts, they created the Black Box, which has the same premise as Nanolabs, but is remotely commanded and completely sealed off from the outside. On top of that, they have designed and manufactured a lot of lab equipment for the station, including microscopes, a spectrophotometer and even a zero-gravity oven. Nanorax is also active in the CubeSat and MicroSat business, having deployed over 200 such devices as of the end of 2020, with the number rapidly growing. They provide end-to-end -end services for companies sending their satellites for a competitive price, as they usually share a ride with the ISS resupply. It began by sending them through the Japanese Kibo module, but later became profitable enough uh, for them to install their own airlock on the ISS called Nanorax Bishop Airlock that you can see right now. Using it over another rideshare comes with many advantages, including last-minute preparations done by the astronaut and flexible launch windows, as there are more flights to the ISS. Even if you require a higher altitude orbit than the ISS has, they also have a solution for that utilizing the Cygnus commercial resupply vehicle. Then, even advertising, which I mentioned in my video on how space stations can make money, is not foreign to them. So far, they have coordinated in-space campaigns for Adidas and Artberg Whiskey. These guys really understand their business. All of the knowledge the company has gathered throughout the years, operating from the ISS and working on such a diversified project portfolio, resulted in the Nanorax outposts. But cutting the chase, what are those outposts? In practice, they will be small space stations, but created through completely unusual means. Rather than construct the station module by module, Nanorax will transform rocket tanks in space into their outposts. But wait, don't they need to hold like propellant inside? How can you make a station from an empty tank? Great questions that I just asked myself. It is true that for the takeoff of the rocket, the tanks can't have delicate equipment inside them, and that is where the Nanorax Mission Extension Kit, or MEEK in short, comes in. 
This will be the beating heart of every outpost, located just above the second stage tanks in the rocket. It will contain all the systems the station needs, like power, pointing, data handling and communications. This is the thing that the company is actually designing. They don't have their own rockets, so they don't have much say in the tank design itself. Nanorax want it to be their proprietary hardware solution that you can just add to the rocket. Here you can see an image made by Nanorax which presents the plan well. On the right you have the Centaur 5 upper stage of the Vulcan, rocket being developed by the United Launch Alliance. As of the day of writing the vehicle has not flown yet, but we can expect a test of this rocket in early 2022 if Blue Origin finishes the development of the BE-4 engines for it. On the left there is the mission extension kit and in between those two there is a separating node with an airlock. After the stage finishes its mission, it is left in the desired orbit. Now the robotic arm takes action and starts adjusting the tank for its secondary mission. This includes actions like moving scientific equipment densely packed in the MiG to the tank or equipping it with desired metal outfitting. The arm or the arms are one of the hardest engineering challenges in this project as they need to be able to do a variety of tasks with a number of instruments. One of the essential ones, as per Nanorak's website, is cutting metal without producing any debris, which they are actually going to test soon, but this is a topic for later. The design might vary on the purpose of the given outpost, but the main idea with the arm stays the same. On the diagram there are also crew accommodations, which might not be needed for all outposts, and two NDSs, which are NASA docking systems. This means that the stations can be operated by a variety of spacecraft, including the Orion, Dragon and the Starliner if it ever becomes operational. Actually, not only that, but the same mechanisms can be also used to dock to the ISS or other stations if need be. Now that we know what Nanorax want to do, let's focus on why their solution is so great and unique. Not that there is much competition in the space station market right now, but it seems still important to keep an edge over others. I think that the biggest advantage of their system is the ability to iterate the design after every station sent with relatively little effort. The approach taken by other companies like Axiom Space does not truly really allow for that. For now, Axiom wants to create a station of their own with a limited number of modules set to be launched in quite a long time frame, with the last element, the Axiom Power Tower, being sent in 2027. There is only so much you can learn from a single launch, and here is where Nanorex really shines. They plan to launch many outposts as secondary payloads to other missions and improve on the design every time, eventually adding new capabilities like satellite servicing or advanced environmental control and life support systems. The lower price of the module also means that outposts don't have to be final. Axiom modules will probably have to be used for a long time to break even, while outposts can be cheaply swapped for newer models. This makes the companies work in nearly different markets where Axiom develops one machine they need and Nanorax is more like a car manufacturer who is bringing new models every year. Now isn't that exciting? Another aspect of this model which amazes me is the ability for rapid integration of the whole station. Now, when you would hypothetically want your own station, it would require years of research and development to achieve something which could be considered an alpha version. With Nanorex you can just take the ready solution without all that hassle. This really shows how they are adapting the business model that drives the nanolabs and black box that I talked about earlier to the bigger scale and bringing the space sector to plethora of companies which previously would not even consider entering the market. This has the potential to absolutely revolutionize the high-tech manufacturing landscape, cutting the R&D costs and allowing organizations to invest their funds where they are more needed. As the outposts are to be by their very nature flexible, Nanorax is also striving to make them vehicle agnostic. 
they are working on many versions of the mission extension kit for different classes of rockets, and although they don't have a public list of the supported vehicles, we can be sure that the Vulcan Center from ULA and Falcon 9 from SpaceX are on it. This will provide a huge number of launch opportunities for potential clients. Regarding the Starship, I find its inclusion highly unlikely as it is designed to be fully reusable, so it would make no sense to leave it in space after launch. And here one of the often mentioned arguments against such space venture comes up, that by growing the access to space, the company will create a lot of space debris. But for Nanorex, this is simply not the case. Their whole system is centered around being a secondary payload of the rocket, which would launch either way, minimizing the debris of the mission if anything. The second stage, which usually is discarded, now becomes useful infrastructure. Some of the outposts, as I mentioned before, might have satellite refueling and servicing capabilities, reducing their impact even more. This approach to sustainability is hardly ever seen among other space companies, making Nanorax really unique. So basically, Nanorax is creating a product with a design which is really easy to iterate, is easily adjustable to the needs of specific customers, can be launched on many different rockets making it independent, and on top of all that is sustainable. Those are the traits of a new potential behemoth in the industry, bringing it the change it needs and motivating others to follow in their steps. This sounds almost too good to be true. But the one thing we know for sure is that they are not resting at this company, as in December 2021 we are to see the first test flight of one of their systems. They are going to bring a robotic arm to space on board the SpaceX Falcon 9 Block 5 rocket during the Transporter 3 mission. The test is called Mars Demo 1 and during it the arm will cut different types of metals, representing different second stage tanks. For their plan to work out, they need to master cutting metal without producing any orbital debris, which would be very problematic on the space station. I hope this demonstration goes well for them, so they can move on to other challenges, reassuring the observers of their capabilities. Truth be told, this mission was originally planned for Q4 of 2020, but was postponed, yet this does not lower my confidence in the company. If there are any sort of problems that you can try to solve on Earth, then it is absolutely better to do that rather than waste funding on a failed mission. Overall, Nanorax is another company that every spaceflight enthusiast should have his or her eyes on. They have already proven themselves to be legit and effective in what they are doing with their other projects. The business plan for the outpost is derived directly from their previous experience, which raises the chances of this being a profitable venture. They also collaborate with huge companies like ULA and SpaceX. I hope that thanks to the efforts of the engineers working on the project, we will see a future in which space is much more accessible, with a multitude of companies owning their own space stations, and pushing both important research and high-tech manufactured goods. For now, the best that observers like us can do is talk about such efforts and bring more attention to them, which in turn can bring more funding. If you enjoy the type of videos I make, remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Do you think that the Outpost project will succeed? You can leave your opinion in the comment section below. I also recommend watching my video about how space stations can generate money. There are some great insights there. Have a great day. Bye.